Right, thanks everyone. Welcome back to the Features Written Code. This is our specific set of videos on um, React.js, specifically React.js with Dynamic Framework. I've noticed, and I'm certain a bunch of you all have noticed, that you see a lot of renders, um, specifically when using the tabs with Dynamic Framework. And so, first of all, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. If I come into my components and I render out to my console, console log tab one, and I put that to in here, and then let's go put it in tab two also. Tab run tab two. Save this, save this. I have my app running. And this is the same app from the uh, last, set of, last set of videos. Let's re-render this guy, and you see my render. Tab 2's render, because I'm on tab 2, tab 1. See, when I switch tabs, I get all these renders. Um, let's go back to the top. So starting at the top, tab 1 render, tab 2 rendered. Now they're both now they're both in a DOM, so every time I switch back and forth between them, you're seeing I'm getting these renders. Right? So we can't kill all the renders, but a couple of things we can do is address why we're getting the renders. We're getting the renders because of this guy. Uh, because they use context and because it's accessing all these variables and what we want to do is we only really want to render the stuff that matters which is everything honestly in this specific example everything inside of on the content when a value in my context changes and so this will become more of an issue when you have much more expensive calculations going on in your inside of your context but but to show the value of um of only rendering components when they need to be rendered, we're just going to assume there's a bunch of expensive stuff going on in here. And what we'll do is we'll just do it on, on one tab, we will optimize, and the other tab we won't optimize, and you'll be able to see the changes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the stuff that matters out of the component. So if you follow the whole React concept of um, you want to make your top-level components as dumb as possible and have your rendering getting pushed down to the edges as far as you can, what matters here really for us is this guy right here. So we're going to take everything here, which is pretty much in this specific example, the whole um, the whole context, and we're going to we're going to take all this stuff and we're going to move it out. So let's take everything here out, and we're going to basically have a function called render contents contents I can't spell contents here. And then we're going to go up to the top here, and we're going to say const render, there we go, render contents. And here we're going to have it just basically return. Let's put a React fragment around that. So we're going to say return. We'll just use a shorthand and just put this simple guy there. Return, return, return. All right. And... It's complaining about function of valid react child. I'm so sorry here. I need to actually call the function. So now we're going to call the function, see the function that returns the element, and we get what we want inside of tab one. And to make sure everything's working right, we're going to take this function, tab one render, and we're going to put it inside of here, tab one render, render contents. Okay. So we get a tab on render and a tab on render contents. It's rendering our contents every single time through. Now, we, really, we don't really need it to re-render this because nothing has changed here. Uh, if I change the value, then I expect it to change. So what we can do here is we can leverage some functionality to get from React hooks. So let's go to React hooks. And so in React hooks, we have these two hooks that you can use. One is called the use callback, which returns a memoize, which I always fucking, excuse me, which I always say wrong. Um, and use memo, which returns just the value. So what we're going to do here is, and as you, if you read here, it says, where does it say? One is really just a shorthand of the other, right here. So use callbacks is really equivalent to this. It's just as, as a, um, a shorthand. So let's try and use callback and see what we get. So what we're going to say here is we're going to wrap my render contents here with a use callback. So let's just put a use callback in front of this guy. 
wrap this whole thing. And oh, sorry there. And what does this? Uh, what's it complaining about? If I render content, it's, it's okay. Um, what's it? Um, what does this guy depend on? This guy depends on these two values. This, these guys. So let's take these guys and drop them right here as the dependency array. Um, well, let's do this. Will that fix it? Wait, I'm doing this wrong. No, I don't want it there. I want it this way. I want render contents. Take that out. And then I want render contacts to do this. And then let's add the import up there. And let's wrap this guy. There we go. Okay. Let's clean this up. So what this says is that I'm going to do a use callback. It's going to return an element. It can return a version of this callback only if the dependence, one of the inputs, these guys have changed. So now I'm inside of my render contents, and let's just so that we'll know, let's put a date. And we should only see this thing get updated occasionally. So um, let's go back here and render contents, render contents, render contents. Under contents. Why is it rendering this thing every single time? Let's go back. That is not what I want to do. So let let me change this. Let me not use. I don't want the function to be called. I want the value, which is the result of the function, to be called. So that's why we're always seeing it. So let's change this to use demo. So now I should get the value of it returned, which is cached. So then what should happen is that I should not be seeing these all these dates of the contents being rendered. Let's resave this. Oh, whoa, whoa. Right? And so since there's a value being returned, it's no longer a function. It's just a value. Let's get that out of there. And it should just return the value. Okay? So now you see what I rendered tab one. So now watch. I go to tab two. You notice that it's not re-rendering the contents. Let's go back to tab one. Notice it's not it's not rendering any of the contents. It's returning the cached value that it had of this. So none of this code in here is being executed. And this is what we want. We just want, hey, I already know what this looks like. Just send me back the value only if something changes. So then what you can see now, now watch what happens here. If I update this value, you'll see it render the contents again. See, it rendered the contents, but when I move again, it's still, you see, it's going through tab one, tab two, tab one, tab two. It's still not rendering the contents in there. And that's what we want. We want to, we only, we want to minimize the rendering of the value. So now, since I have this function here, I can take this function, I can pick up my render content function, because if you notice, Everything inside of the render contents is the same except for the value here. Um, we can basically duplicate this exact same function over here inside of tab two. And so that would mean, well, tab two does does actually take you to the second page, but we can remove this update value, we can remove the shared value, we can take all this out, we can put our function up here, our render contents, let's get our dependencies added in here. Our dependencies added, render contents, which once again, like I said, it's a cached value. It is not the function that we're executing again. We can remove this stuff, render contents. Uh, oh, oh, I didn't want to put that there. Let me undo, 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 undo. That comes out. We want it down here. Render contents. Format this guy, and then what we should see, and let's clean this up because here now inside of tab two, tab two, tab two, render contents. 
tab two. Let's clean this up a bit. Okay. Now, let's look at our comments. I mean, look at our uh, the console output. Let's reload this guy. Uh, see, it's only see so you read the new contents for tab one. This we're only in tab one because tab two isn't loaded to DOM yet. Now, if we switch over to tab two. You can see it rendered the contents for tab two, but you don't see the render contents for tab one. And now if I go back to tab one, we're not seeing any of the contents, any of the code inside of here being re-rendered, right? So we've optimized our renders on the page. Um, but if I reset the value, you can see on both of the pages, tab one and tab two, the content got re-rendered, which, which is what we expected. So this was just a short video to show you how, how you can optimize. Um, and we optimized here. We did not use a callback because I don't want to just keep calling the same function, right? I want the value cached. And so by using the use memo or memo, however you say it, uh, it returns the memo, memoized value. Pass a create function, which is what we did. This is the create function. So how we want to create the React component that we want to render. So we passed a create function and an array of dependencies. These are the two things that might change. And it will only recompute the value when one of the dependencies has changed. This optimization helps avoid expensive calculations on every render. So basically, it's just going to give me back this component with the values in it as it was rendered the first time because nothing has changed. Um, you may rely on this as a performance optimization, not as a semantic guarantee. In the future, React may choose to forget some blah, 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 blah. But this will optimize an ad performance. So um, this is pretty awesome. Um, it does address some of the issue of uh, a lot of these renders that people that I've seen people concerned about that they're getting specifically with tabs. The important one other thing that I want to mention here is if you take a look at what's really happening when these tabs are done, like these tabs are really in the DOM, just hidden. So let's go here in the code, and I'm in tab one. Let's inspect. So I am content is the whole thing. And then um, here we go. Iron content, shadow root open. There's my tab one. Ba ba ba. Let's see if I open the shadow root. What else we got there? You got error school transition. Dun, dun, dun. Div, div class. Iron page in. Iron header. Toolbar. Iron content. Tab two. Right. So you see, this page, this page is in memory. I mean, sorry, I don't want to say memory. Memory is not the right word to use. It's in the DOM. Let's just say that. Um, because you can see everything is, this is all in the router. The iron router, the iron router has the pages in there. Page, this page is hidden, so page two is hidden, but it's in there. So this is how if I switch. See how it's switched from tab one to tab two? Now my page, I'm um, page one, which is really tab one, is visible. I switch back to tab two, and you can see it's changing. Um, so the fact that they're both still in the DOM is why you're seeing the renders happen. And so that kind of explains what's happening. And what we're using is we're using a React optimization to um, address the fact that we don't want, theoretically, if this is some, ex if inside of here, this is some expensive reload or some expensive um, API call or something, we've addressed that issue by uh, using this functionality here. So I hope this short little video kind of helped you understand what was going on and was um, just some additional knowledge. I know that there's a fair number of folks who are kind of moving over to React from Angular because, and they kind of got on board with all this through Ionic. So that's why, Although I know you can find some of this content other places, I notice people that come to the channel to learn about Ionic and React, so I figured some important React components um, are beneficial to add to the program that I have in place. And speaking of the program that I have in place, you know, for those of you who are still hanging around for this part of the video, um, if you check out my YouTube channel, I strongly encourage you to, let's uh, pause as I hate hearing my voice, I strongly encourage you to scroll on down here to my um, course that I'm putting together, which this video, by the time you see it, will be added to it. It's about uh, learning to build mobile apps with Ionic Framework and React Capacitor. 
this will kind of be kind of the third one that's a just helpful hint that'll be added um, in between the next uh, video, which is where I'm going to take the context that we're actually using here and switch it to keep track of authentication context. Um, thank you very much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Please share with others. And also please be uh, certain to leave comments, suggestions on other content you'd like to see. Thanks a lot. Hope everybody's having a good Memorial Day and take care. Bye now.